Okay, welcome to part two of this video in which we are convolving two exponentials. In part one, we showed how to do the convolution when uh, the base term or the, the factor of the exponentials are different. We had, in this case, b is not equal to a. Uh, but in the case where b is equal to a, then we'll have to take a slightly different approach because, again, uh, if we have b equal to a, our formula here doesn't work because we end up with 1 minus 1. Um, and so that's just not going to work. We also end up on the top with 1 minus 1. So let's take, uh, let's take this formula here and uh, look at what happens when we have a equal to b. So we'll bring up a blank uh, screen here. We have y of n is the summation, k going from 0 to n, of a to the n. Now, if we set a equal to b, we can write this a to the n minus k. Oops, and that should be k there. Otherwise, things just aren't going to work. OK, so we have a to the k, a to the n minus k. Well, in a manner similar to what we did before, we can write this as a to the n, a to the minus k. And uh, you can see now that we have an a to the k times a to the minus k. And a to the k times a to the minus k is 1. Our n, our a to the n, is independent of k. So I can write this whole thing then as uh, a to the n summation k is equal to 0 to n of 1. Again, the 1 comes from a to the k times a to the minus k. OK, well, if I'm summing 1's, uh, basically, I'm just counting the number of terms in the summation. And so when n is equal to 0, I'd sum from k going from 0 to 0, so there'd be one term. When n is equal to 1, I'd go k equals 0, then 1, so there'd be two terms. So in general, this summation, this guy here, is just going to be n plus 1, because there are n plus 1 terms of 1 in the summation. So if I write this out then, I get that the convolution is equal to n plus 1, a to the n. Okay, so there you have it. This is actually um, a nice result because it's uh, very similar to the result that you get for continuous time convolution. If you convolve two exponentials, uh, two continuous time exponentials with each other, um, you get uh, that the convolution is t e to the minus constant t. And here we have something similar. We have uh, the time variable times a to the raised to the n. So if you graph this, it looks like this. And you can see um, I now have three fourths convolved with the three fourths raised to the n convolved with itself. It starts out at one, goes up, and then goes back down. Okay, so. That actually pretty much completes this video. Uh, just to remind you what we've accomplished, we figured out how to convolve two um, exponential functions, and uh, we've developed uh, the answer to that. We've, um, oops, where did it go? We've uh, used the sum of a geometric series formula uh, to solve this problem, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, hopefully this uh, is informative and useful, and thanks for watching.